right, happy Saturday morning to you all. We're headed out of our little uh, RV campsite here. Uh, Link is leading the troop this morning. Fran is right in front of me. And uh, we are headed over to uh, find a eating spot close to the where the meetup ride is going to happen. Link has got to stop and get some fuel. He said he's uh, just about dry, so... <clears throat> I see Fran's done a uh, tail tidy, kind of a fender delete there with some custom signals. Looks pretty good. Whoa, go now. So I was digging through all the settings on the, the GoPro 11 trying to figure out how to get it hooked up through Wi-Fi on my phone or do live streaming and they've changed the Go app, uh, the Quick app, sorry. Uh, and I can't find the Go Live button in that silly thing anywhere. I was digging around. Maybe I'm using the wrong utility, uh, but I'm using GoPro Quick, which is how you control the camera, so I don't know. Anyway, uh, I'm going to do a live stream of the uh, ride today and uh, I'll just do it through the phone, you know, just direct through uh, StreamYard or the GoPro app or whatever. And uh, I'm trying to configure all that stuff remotely through my computer at home using any desk and all that. <laughs> it's just, it's impossible to do on a little phone screen. So I skip it. I'm just going to do it the easy way. I'll record the video as per usual. And uh, then you know, the live stream will just be what it is. Good luck. So Link has got a uh, Dynojet Power Commander uh, on his bike, and it's been dyno-tuned. And he was offering to let me ride that and see what I think about it. Uh, he's got the DCT, uh, and he said that it improves the DCT uh, performance quite a bit. He said he gained about 10 horsepower, 10 torque, and the uh, rev limiter uh, was raised a bit, or at least the shift points on the DCT were raised. So. Uh, when he's really on it, it uh, carries it all the way up to 8,000 RPM instead of shifting it like 6,500. So it's pretty cool. I might take a ride on that in a little bit, see how it goes. And I will circle around the other side and we'll all three fill up. I don't really need fuel, but I'll top off. Why not? It's a little bit chilly today. I think we're in the mid to high 50s right now. I think this the high temp for today is only going to be uh, 60 or 62 degrees, something like that. I didn't check the weather forecast again, but it's a little on the chilly side. So I'm wearing the uh, the rain shell top and bottom to uh, give me a little bit of wind protection. I didn't put my thermals on. Don't think I need that. So we got about a 30 minute ride, Link said. Uh, he's routing for us. He's gonna take us on the uh, back roads, avoid the main highways. It only added like you know, three or four minutes to the total ride. So we'll get some back road uh, twisties here, hopefully. I need to lube my chain. I uh, was gonna do that at one of my last few uh, fuel stops, but I was in such a hurry getting in, you know, just crushing miles as hard and fast as I could. I haven't lubed this chain at all in 1,500 miles, so it's probably getting a little bit dry. They're sealed chains, you know, O-ring chains, so they're not really dry, but just as far as keeping those uh, O-rings lubricated, it's always a good idea to uh, put a little bit of good goo on there, keep them happy. So, trying to set up all the electronic gear, man, it, it complicates the ride so much. It's nice sometimes to just go out and do these rides and not video and worry about camera angles and audio and you know, all the nonsense. Uh, Link has a pack talk bold, just like I do. Uh, we haven't set them up yet. Uh, and then obviously when we... Uh, when we get rolling, uh, I'll have the third Cardo involved, or fourth or fifth, or however many Cardos we have in a group, but I need to get the dedicated audio recorder going and uh, try to capture some of the group 
sound chatting. I forgot to charge my pack talk last night, so the battery's toast. <laughs> I've got it in my uh, my jacket pocket here, charging up on a USB pack. And then, of course, I've got the uh, cable. You guys can probably see it in the camera there, but uh, I've got the cable second port of that thing running up here to the camera to keep the uh, GoPro 11 charge. The swapping batteries in this media mod is a no-go. Uh, so Link, uh, excuse me, Link has the uh, passenger seat and the uh, rear rack. Uh, I thought about going that route with mine, but the passenger seat accessory from Honda isn't really tall enough to use it as a sissy bar to attach a bag to and have the bag sitting on the back of that shelf. Um, I thought maybe with the solo rack on the fender minus the passenger seat and that rear rack, that might work because that would give a long shelf. So I don't know. I may end up going that route one of these days. But that would only be necessary if I want to do the bag lengthwise. And I'm not doing that. I'm going side to side. And we can be honest about the Rebel uh, as a two-up bike, uh, it ain't. <laughs> uh, you'd have to find a uh, very patient pillion to uh, want to sit on that little penalty box back there for any length of time at all. Uh, the seating position is very cramped, uh, there's really no leg room, your knees are folded up around your ears, and uh, the seat is very narrow. It's basically a rapist invading your backside. Uh, so, no passenger on this bike, at least not for very long. A little quick jaunt around town, sure. If you get a very small girlfriend, she might fit on the back. She's not going to like it back there very much. So that's why I deleted my passenger seat. I left the pegs on here just in case, you know, I ever want to toss the passenger seat back on it, but I'm not going to put that passenger backrest on there. It's just, it's dinky. It doesn't, doesn't make sense. Uh, and it's quick to put the rear seat or the solo rack on or off of the bike. It's just two, are they six mil Allen uh, bolts? You just zip it in, zip it out. That's real easy to put the passenger seat on there. So once you've got the, uh, the pegs installed, it's no big deal. You know, the, the left side bracket just stays there and it provides a nice tie down point for uh, bags. You know, if you're gonna end up uh, strapping a dry bag across the back, whatever. Handy tie down spot. I don't think that left bracket weighs all that much. It's probably three or four pounds. So it's not light, but it's not obscenely heavy. People get so hung up on weight reduction on motorcycles. Uh, you know, oh, I installed these lightweight accessories. It cost me 400 bucks and I saved X number of pounds or whatever, you know, you know, exhausts or whatever. I can understand if it's a performance gain or, you know, if you're getting a significant weight reduction, you know, 10, 15 pounds. Okay, yeah, that's not too bad. But where everybody falls down in their reasoning and their logic and their justifications is go on a diet, fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that to myself, I say it to anybody else, you know, you want to save some weight on the bike, save it in your belly, because the rider's weight is the biggest influence on the bike, you know, if you got a 150 pound rider on a given bike versus a 220 pound or 250 pound rider, that bike is going to perform and handle totally differently, uh, because it's not carrying around all that extra weight, so instead of spending a thousand dollars on a titanium exhaust to save a couple of pounds, Go walking in the evenings. Put down the haagen <laughs> You'll save a lot more weight that way. And it costs a lot less. <clears throat> a lot of roundabouts up here. I like this. As long as people know how to use them.
down in the south, man, nobody knows how to use roundabouts. Pull up to them and stop and look. And try to figure out which direction they're going. And then they end up going the wrong way around or try to go straight across it. What the? What's wrong with you? And it is in our driver's manuals. But people encounter them so infrequently here in the States. And they just lose their minds to forget what they're doing. It is windy today. This cold front is blowing in some weather. Uh, we don't have rain in the forecast up here from what I remember reading, but uh, it's chilly and very windy. 18 to 20 mile an hour gusts and uh, it's nipply this morning. No footer, no footer, no footer, no footer, no footer, no footer. Still no footer. <laughs> <laughs> the more squared off my back tire gets, the easier it is to stand this thing up at a stop. <laughs> Pretty soon it's going to look like a car tire on the back of this thing. It'll be so square. I've got 8,500 miles on this thing. Let me see if I can get back to my uh, mileage. Uh, yep, 8,658 on the factory rear tire, and it still has a couple thousand miles or so left in it. I'm surprised. Now, most of these are touring miles, obviously, you know, but if it were all around town miles, you know, accelerating hard, scrubbing it out, yeah, I'd probably be thinner on the back. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, even touring, if you're just going straight line like this, you wear out that center section pretty fast and square off. Uh, this one's wearing quite well. These Dunlops have done uh, surprisingly well on this bike, in my opinion. I'll be replacing the rear on the, well, I'll probably just do set, you know, front and rear. Uh, when I return to Houston after this trip, uh, but definitely the rear is going to need help because it's going to be thin. The front is probably going to last for 30,000 miles plus at this rate, <clears throat> but I'd like to put a matched set of tires on this thing. The front is a little greasy, let's call it, in corners. It, uh, it slides around a bit more than I would like it to, so it'll be nice to put some sportier rubber on this thing. I just don't want it to be sticky sporty and uh, wear it down too fast, you know. Leaves are uh, changing and blowing out of these trees. I don't know if I got it on camera yesterday, but I went through some leaf storms uh, out on the highway. There were 30 mile an hour gusts kind of blowing diagonally uh, into me and they were tearing all the dead leaves off the trees and I was just going through what looked like a hail storm of leaves. It was just everywhere, super thick. Cars were actually hitting their brakes and slowing down. <laughs> it was pretty wild looking. Ooh, that smells good. It's like fresh cut cedar or something back there. That smelled really good. Gonna be a no-footer stop this time. I'd have to be really good at balancing. <laughs> so Fran got one of the helmet hooks. I need to put mine back on. He said that he brought two or three extras with him, so I might snag one from him. I missed it when I was uh, stealth camping last night, or not last night, night before. Uh, I went to hang my helmet on the hook over here. Oh crap! I forgot to put it back on when I changed my bars back. So Fran, uh, on the back right here, he is also rocking the uh, Kaufman's Thunder exhaust on his bike. So he's got a Kaufman's. Uh, I don't know what Link has on his bike. I didn't pay attention. It might be uh, Vance and Hines or, I'm not sure. Uh, it's not the factory exhaust. But uh, Fran got the uh, blackout, you know, no nameplate option on the Kaufman's Thunder. So he really likes it. I might end up replacing mine eventually with the uh, Thunder straight back uh, and I'll get the the black satin 
logo uh, option on there because I still want to show the Kaufman's name. But if it's a little more subdued, you know, that kind of silver uh, smoke gray color uh, on the logo, that'd be cool. I don't mind the red nameplate on there. It doesn't bother me. The new one just looks cooler. River Area Park. pretty back here. Fran put a Mustang solo seat on his bike and really likes it. I sat on it and I have to agree that it's a very comfortable seat compared to the factory seat. However, uh, it seems like the rear hooks that located in under the pins on the back of the seat are a little bit finicky because uh, it was unlatched when I sat down on it and the seat was kind of cocked sideways. And uh, he tried two or three times to click it back in there and was having trouble with it. So I don't know if that's something unique to his seat or if that's kind of common to those uh, Mustangs. If the reputation of the build quality of those seats is good, then I might consider putting one on this. I had a similar problem with my Corbin seat that I got for my 500X. It just didn't fit worth a shit. Uh, it didn't latch in. The Getting the front tongue in under the edge of the tank and all that was nearly impossible. Uh, the uh, rear latch would not latch unless I sat on the back seat and jumped up and down on it or, you know, climbed up on the back and put my knee down real hard in the uh, back portion of the seat up on the pillion side where that latch is, and that would force it to latch in. And then good luck getting it unlatched again. Thoroughly unimpressed with that uh, Corbin seat. I've had Corbin in the past, and they they were good on other bikes. But uh, it seems like their quality control is a little hit or miss. And the fitment for that 500X was just horrible. It was so wide in the front that I couldn't even get my legs down to the ground. I was sitting down in a square bowl. I still have it, by the way. If anybody wants it, hit me up. Uh, send me an email or uh, message me over on my Discord server or on Instagram or something. Uh, let me know that you would like a seat for a CV500X Corbin. It's a $500 seat. It has about uh, 2,000 miles worth of my butt time on it, and it never broke in. I just, it didn't work for me. Now, somebody that's taller, uh, would, it would probably be okay, but you're going to have to be probably... 510 plus uh, for that leg angle to work out. I just don't have that. My 30 inch inseam is already strained for that bike at you know, 31 and a half, 32 inch seat height, whatever it is. It's 32 inches, I think. Uh, and then that, you know, the bowl, the profile on the front of that seat was so wide, I just I could not get my legs to the ground comfortably. It's pinching the back of my leg, didn't feel good. and it pushed me too far back from the bars. So that was the big thing that I didn't like. Uh, I mean, it was like way, way further back, three inches further back. So 
you know, I got short arms anyway, so I was really hunched forward just to reach the bars. Not good. Good for somebody that's taller. I need to ask Link what uh, crash bar he's got on the front of his. It looks like the Daytona. It's wider than the SW Motec crash guard by far. Uh, I like the uh, the width of it because it doesn't stick out past his legs. I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera. It's just right about the edge of the legs, which is perfect because then uh, if you wanted to get industrious, you could put wind deflectors on there and uh, it would give you, you know, shin protection against rocks and uh, a little bit of wind deflection and stuff. Just put some uh, smoked plexi on the front of it or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. And of course, it gives a place to mount highway pegs or uh, driving lights or both. That's really what I wanted it for on this, uh, is to mount highway pegs and driving lights. Nice job, doofus. I can see what kind of exhaust he's got on there. Looks like a Two Brothers. Can't tell. I think it's Two Brothers. It doesn't seem overly loud, uh, but notice he has to use the shorter bag on the right side because the, the larger bag would interfere with the pipe. That's why I didn't want the Two Brothers or the uh, uh, Vance and Hines because they are upswept. We're getting close to our, you know, pre-check times and all that. So uh, we're just going to head over to the coffee place uh, close to where the meetup is happening across the street from it or wherever. I'm not even sure. Uh, and we'll just hang out there for, you know, hour and a half, almost two hours before the ride. That'll give me time to try to set up the live stream and uh, get the map uh, up on my phone. Uh, I... Uh, Birch sent out a link to that. I'm going to put that link up uh, in my video as well, or at least in the uh, description of the video. That way people can kind of look at the path that we're going to be riding. Uh, just get everything prepped. Again, doing the video production and <laughs> live stream and all that, just it complicates things a lot. Uh, it's easier to just ride and do these things. So I guess this is the parking garage where everybody's going to meet. Where's the... Uh coffee place. Pine cones all over the place. I can tell those are 1100. Rebel Rounders. I can tell by the noise. Oh, fuck the bus. Oh my god. Hey. <laughs> How are you recording, Rob? Huh? This camera. Ooh, I like the brown. See, I haven't gotten to see the brown in person yet. I like that here. Huh? I don't think I have here. 